Welcome to section 10.8 as we compare linear, exponential, and quadratic models slash graphs slash equations. First one up is the linear function. Which of these guys, which equation represents a linear function? Well, hopefully that we remember y equals mx plus b from last year. What kind of graph does that give us? A graph that looks like a line. Next one up is a quadratic function, what we've been doing this whole chapter. And we know that is ax squared plus bx plus c. What kind of graph does that give us? A u-shaped graph. And everybody's favorite now, an exponential function. What does that, or what does that equation look like? It looks like y equals a b to the x. And the graph is a, whoa, is a line that moves up very rapidly or down very very rapidly next we are going to graph these coordinate points and state if they are linear exponential or quadratic function so the first thing we have to do is plot these points in a table i'm going to go x y remember this the first coordinate is your x coordinate the second is your y coordinate so i'm going to plot these in a table so it's going to be negative four and then that corresponds with 132nd negative two and one eighth zero and one half two and two four and eight now negative four over one thirty second or up one thirty second, so I'm gonna go from my origin, I'm gonna go over one, two, three, four, and go up one thirty second, which is really, really small on this graph. So I'm gonna almost put it right there. It's slightly off the x-axis. Next is negative two one eighth. So I go over negative two up one eighth, so I'm gonna put it just slightly higher. Zero one half, so I'm at zero, I go up a half. And there looks like a half, then two and two, so I go over two, up two, and put my point. And then finally four, eight, I go over four, up four, six, eight. Now you can go ahead, connect the dots to the best of your ability. Your line will look much better than mine as I miss one of my points. Draw my line. It is increasing very rapidly. And so if we go back to last page, what function does that? What graph does it? It's the exponential function. So what graph is this? It is the exponential function graph. Next one, we jump to two. Again, we're going to put those coordinates in our table and our x, y table. So it's negative four, one, negative two, two, zero, three, two, four, four, five. Go ahead and plot your points. So it's, whoa, that's not plotting. We have negative four, one, so we go over negative four, up one, over negative two, up two, over none, up three, over to the right, two, up four, and then over to the right, four, up, five. And if we plot our points correctly, no, notice what shape that we get. We get a beautiful line as we connect the dots. And so what graph gives us a line that is a linear function, gives us a line? Let's try another one. Now, instead of actually putting these coordinates in a table, I'm just going to graph them from the coordinate points. So, as I pull up my pen, negative four, five, I go over one, two, three, four, up one, two, three, four, five, put a point. Negative two, two, go over to the left two, up two, zero, one. Positive two, up two. Positive four, up. One, two, three, four, five. Again, connect your dots as best as you can. And this has the making of a very beautiful parabola. And so, what kind 
a function gives us a parabola, that is a quadratic function, right? That is a quadratic function. Check your numbers really closely. Notice that our, our y coordinates, it goes 5, down to 2, down to 1, then back to 2 and 5. In a quadratic function, your y coordinates should match as soon as they hit the bottom, the minimum, the vertex, right? Your y coordinates should match. Now, what happens if we're asked to use the table to tell us what kind of function it is? We're not graphing anymore. We're not graphing the function. So, let's take a peek at our tables. Start with your x values. Does your x values in your table increase consistently? We go negative 2 to negative 1 to 0. Yes, they increase consistently. It's adding 1 each time, so that's very important in step 1. They add 1 each time. Now, how do we get from 2 to 0.5? Well, we are subtracting 1.5. Okay, that's interesting. How do we get from 0.5 to 0? Well, we're subtracting just 0.5 this time. How do we get from 0 to 0.5? Now we are adding 0.5. And how do we get from 0.5 to 2? We are adding 1.5. Well, so far they're not consistent, so we know it's not linear. But let's keep looking at these differences. Is there a constant difference the next time around? Well, how do we go from negative 1.5 to negative 0.5? Well, we just add 1. How do we go from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5? We just add 1 again. And finally, how do we go from 0.5 to positive 0.5? Or 1.5? We add 1. Notice our pattern here, plus 1, plus 1 plus one. That is known as a second difference. And when our second difference is the same, we get a quadratic function. So this graph here, or this table represents a quadratic function. Again, if you want to take a look at your y values, what happens to the y values? You go 2 to 1.5 to 0, back up to 0.5. Our y values shouldn't match, right? Should match at some point if we are dealing with a quadratic function. Next, let's take a look at 5. Do our x values increase consistently? Do we go from negative 2 to negative 1? So we are, we are, whoops, I need to bring my pen up. We are increasing by 1 each time. So that's a good thing. Now, how do we go from 2 to 4? Well, we could add 2, but does that work from 4 to 8? No, it doesn't. So now we're not adding 2 anymore. Let's try multiplying by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so that works. 4 times, oops, that should be a 2. So we are multiplying by 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So far, so good. 8 times 2 is 16. Awesome. And 16 times 2 is 32. So that works perfectly. If we wanted to go the other way, if we would want to take 4 and divide by 2, if we wanted to go this way, we would divide them to get 2. Divide to get 2. Divide to get 2. So there's another way you can look at that. And so when you multiply or divide to the next y term, we get a graph of a exponential function. And now finally, let's look at number six. Are our x values increasing consistently each time? Yes, they are. They are increasing by one each and every time. So that's a good start. Now, how for our y values, how do we go from one to the next? Well, in this case, we are adding two. Well, does negative five to negative three go by two? Absolutely. And negative 3 to negative 1, how do we get there? We add 2 and we add 2. Perfectly. So now, what kind of graph does this give us? What kind of graph is a constant change? Constant rate of change. This is a constant rate of change. What graph gives us that? That is a 
linear graph or a linear function. And finally, to round it all off, what graph do we have when what happens? Well, a quadratic function graph, remember, was the second difference was the same. We look here at number four. The red was the second difference, right? Blue was the first difference. Red was the second difference. When the second difference is the same, it is a quadratic function. An exponential function, there is a common ratio between y values. Remember, common ratio, you could multiply, multiply going forward, or you could divide, right? Common ratio means multiplication or division. And then a linear function where the first difference is the same. Right, so quadratic function, the second difference is the same. Exponential function, you have to multiply or divide to get each of your y terms. And then your linear function, your first difference will always be the same. And that does it for section 10.8.